On the fringes and outskirts of colonized space, the salt of the earth pioneers very rarely have the backing of, nor the funds to buy from, the more dignified and well received vessel manufacturers. And so in these regions that sit on the periphery of the UE Navy's jurisdiction and area of influence, among the jury rigged and slag welded vessels that the everyday pilot can afford to run, the distinctive silhouette of a Drake vessel is likely a common sign. While they may not sport the sleek forms of an origin, nor the thunderous promise of violence of an Aegis, the Drake, and let's be honest here, it's usually a cutlass, has such an iconic and recognizable form that there's likely not a single community in the universe of Star Citizen that isn't familiar with it. And that's to say nothing about the unmistakable thundering of a Drake thruster. Citizens, my name's Beard of Oz, and today I'll be fanboying over the Drake Cutlass Black. We'll run over some specs, what it's good for, and mostly just watching it be arguably the most iconic ship in Star Citizen. Let's dive in. First things first, you can buy the Cutlass Black from New Deal in Lawville for just shy of 1.4 million alpha UEC. If that's a bit rich for your blood, try my easy money guide here and you'll have that scratch in no time. If you love this ship unconditionally, and will love it till the end of time and cannot imagine a world in which you don't own it, you can pledge it via the RSI store for around 100 US dollars. The Cutlass Black is heavily marketed by CIG as the go-to ship for would-be pirates and smugglers. It even says so on the buyer page of the RSI website, and when you start using the ship, you can see why. With a sizable armament for the price range, four size 3 weapon slots for the pilot and two size 3s on a top mounted turret for a second player, it's packing a decent punch. From the factory it will sport a pair of gimbaled size 2 laser repeaters as well as a pair of gimbaled size 2 gatlings for the pilot and the turret comes with a pair of size 3 laser repeaters. Personally, I'll switch out the ballistics for another pair of laser repeaters as the Cutlass can more than accommodate for the power draw especially with upgraded components. While currently less than effective in 3.17.1, a pair of distortion repeaters set for the turret would make quite the pirate's friend, allowing the less than lawful clue to easily tackle smaller prey and bring them to a standstill. The Cutlass also comes with a size 2 shield that once upon a time was quite the draw card, though the current iteration of that shield design is less than forgiving. Hopefully it's a matter of watch this space and not, oh well, deal with it. A size 2 quantum drive coupled with the Cutlass's generous fuel supply allows the use of the faster components without the shorter jump distance, giving its crew free reign in the traversal about the Stanton system without needing to refuel every 5 minutes. Two size 2 coolers and a size 2 power supply set the Cutlass up for a good old time in the verse, allowing for a diverse range of activities and implementations within Star Citizen. You might not know this, but when I first bought the Cutlass Black, I hated it, couldn't stand it. But over time, its diverse range of uses won me over. It won me over in the same way that I'm hoping I can win you over to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I tricked you, I know, I'm sorry. But the Cutlass Black has made me into a scurvy dog. Alright, back to the video. Aesthetically speaking, it does have a rather spare parts welded together vibe. One that you'll either love or hate. Its silhouette is unmistakable, so much so in the midst of a PvE bounty mission, you'll be able to pick it out visually every time. With the iconic Drake thrusters that can not just visually VTOL, but actually VTOL, and the pot-bellied fuselage, the Cutlass is so recognizable, I'd go so far as to wager that while the Gladius is the flagship of Squadron 42, the Cutlass Black is the face of Star Citizen's persistent universe. It has a somewhat open canopy design to the cockpit, though you will lose considerable visual range below the dash horizon, but for those playing the game with a wobbly neck the open top view does allow for a better target tracking experience. The top mounted turret with its 360 degree field of view allows for a decent defensive or offensive playstyle and for the more annoying of squad mates, a constant stream light show. While the unique design of the Cutlass makes it unmistakable, it also allows for many mishaps and lost parts as the out there feel of its extremities can often catch or clip and be summarily destroyed, resulting in either a loss of a weapon or the loss of thruster control. The cavernous cargo hold is what really gives the Cutlass Black its jack of all trades flexibility. 
capable of holding 46 SCU of cargo for trade, and while in the world of cargo hauling in its current state that may fall into the not profitable pile, the upcoming changes with the cargo refactor being piecemeal rolled out may see that slider scale in the Drake's favour. That cargo area is also capable of transporting small ground vehicles, most noticeably and worth an honourable mention, the Grey Cat ROC, a ground miner's best friend. Also, the Drake Mule, a couple hover bikes, you get the point. It has these wonderful side doors for exit and under the right conditions entry, should you not wish to wait for its primary point of entry and exit, the ramp. This space also allows the holding and transporting of many, many, many bodies, you know, if you're into that kind of thing. It's also good for courier missions, but I'm sure you figured that out already. It has a bed for logging out in the black and it's mostly safe, but for a ship that is clearly marketed as a frontier friendly vessel with all this space, not a single hygiene related amenity. I guess pirates and salt of the earth folk just have to stop at a space truck spot every nine hours. Like I said, at first I wasn't overly fond of the Cutlass Black. It seemed like the ship that everyone wanted, yet for some reason it just irked me. The flight path seemed too jittery and the thruster boost seemed to throw the ship off its heading. But after 3.17.1 it seemed smoother, more responsive. And I don't know if CIG did something behind the scenes, but now it's an absolute pleasure to fly, especially when I've got my cute little mule in the back. So what about you? Do you own the Drake Cutlass Black? Is it your all day runaround? Are you eagerly awaiting the day when true piracy is possible and you can use it for all the activities stated on the wrapper? Let me know in the comments section below. And there you have it. Just a whole lot of Drake for this fanboy and hopefully you enjoyed it too. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so I know you're a trash panda Drake fan like me too. Check out another of the channel's videos here and I will catch you all in the verse next time.